In this module, we will walk through a simple EECS call between two Astra systems. We'll assume they're already configured properly. The purpose here is to see the messaging EECS uses. We'll go through EECS configuration in the next module. We start with two Astra systems. The one on the left is the one initiating this call, as indicated by the direction of the arrow. The word above is the specific message being sent. The first message sent is called new. It will include the called number and may include other information, such as the calling number, a list of codecs it can speak, and authentication credentials. The Astra server on the right responds with an accept message. This acknowledges the prior new message and indicates the receiving server's willingness to take the call. The accept message also declares the codec that the right-hand server wants to use for the call. The left-hand server sends an ACK, or acknowledgement, in response to the accept, and then waits for further updates. The right-hand server next sends a ringing message. This call control message tells the left-hand side that the called party is being alerted of the call. The called party isn't necessarily an EECS device. It could be a traditional analog phone connected to a Digium Dottie interface card, or it could be a SIP phone, or any number of other types of endpoints. It's not important for the left-hand side to know what the endpoint is, but it is important for it to know that the called party is being alerted. The left-hand side might take the cue of ringing to play an audible ringback to the person who initiated the call. When the left-hand side receives the ringing message, it responds with an ACK. Next, we see the right-hand side sending an answer message. This means that the called party has accepted the call, typically by answering a ringing phone. After this message is acknowledged, the two endpoints should be able to start transmitting media to each other. Note that this acceptance is different than the accept message earlier in the call flow. The message called accept is automatically sent by the EEX channel driver when it receives a valid new request. The answer message is sent when a human or dial plan indicates that media should be passed between the two endpoints. Media is now flowing in both directions between the endpoints. Media in EEX is still carried via EEX frames and not by any other protocol. Most media in EEX is carried by mini frames that have the smallest possible headers. But once a minute or so, full frames are sent that synchronize timestamps. Some media frames may be sent along with the ringing message earlier in the call flow if the right-hand side asterisk server were playing ringback to the called party on the left. So don't be too surprised if you look at a debug or wire trace of an EECS call and it looks like media is flowing before the answer. Media continues to flow in both directions until one side hangs up. Of course, either side can terminate the call. A message called hang up is sent when one party ends the call. Here it's the right-hand side terminating the call. The hang-up is acknowledged by the left-hand side, and we're back to the initial point where we have no communication between the endpoints. This simple example didn't show any authentication challenges or how a transfer works. The point here isn't to make you an expert on EECS signaling, but to give you a little bit of familiarity with the protocol. The EECS RFC has several examples of the signaling exchanges for the most common EECS dialogues, such as for registration, transferring, and keep-alives. Now that you have a fundamental understanding of the EECS protocol, we can proceed to the next module where we'll focus on configuring EECS in asterisk.